morning, everybody. We are so glad that you are here today. I wanna to welcome you. My name is Nicole, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Bethel. I'm excited to be able to share a couple of upcoming opportunities with you in the life of our church. Our men's ministry is really excited to bring a unique event to the area this coming weekend. We'll be hosting speaker Billy Moles at our Fergus Falls campus this Saturday, March 26th at 5 p.m. Billy has worked most of his life as an Alaskan hunting guide. He's an adventurer, outdoorsman, and storyteller, but most importantly, a believer in Christ. And he is passionate about sharing the gospel through the stories of his Alaskan adventures. You're invited to bring a friend and come to hear his tales of adventure, excitement, and inspiration. Whether you enjoy the great outdoors or the great indoors, I know that you will enjoy Billy and what he has to share as he tells us how he met God in the wilderness of Alaska. This event is open to all. There will be a meal served and kids 16 and under are free. So check it out, bring a friend, and we hope to see you there. Also, I don't know about you, but I am ready to be done with winter and cold temps. I'm excited to be outdoors and I look forward to more outdoor time, more friends and family and fellowship with the people around me. And we are going to help you do that by hosting our first ever winter wrap up block party at both campuses. This is a free event and open to the community. We'll have bounce houses, balloon bingo, walking tacos, games and more. Let's grab a neighbor or a friend, get out of the house, and let's enjoy time to just gather and be the church. Welcome others to join in and appreciate the gift of a new season that God gives us. Meet in either Bethel, Fergus Falls, or Battle Lake locations from three to five on Saturday the 3rd. Hope to see you there. So thanks church for letting me share these upcoming opportunities with you. Before we continue in worship, let's look at God's word for us from Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Would you join me now as we gather together for worship and sing to the Lord a new song? Let's praise and give thanks to him. Man, please, you may be seated. So, oh, quite some time ago, last fall, and then with a few breaks in between, we began a, a series in, in the Bible, in the book of the New Testament book of Ephesians, and we're going to continue with that today. The series uh, theme has been In Christ, Where Divisions Died. Um, and it seems like for chapter after chapter, Paul is telling us that our identity is found in Jesus. That's who you are in Christ. When you're a believer, you're a Christian, your identity is found in him. It's not in you. It's not in your coming out to the world. It's finding yourself in Jesus. And that's a radically different way to think about identity. And then he starts to say, okay, if that's true, what does that look like? How do you live your life? Like, what does living in Christ look like? And so that's where we've been the last few weeks, especially And today is no different. In chapter 5, which is where we are again today, of of Ephesians, um, Paul starts to talk about what does living in Christ mean in relationship? Okay. So as you live out your in Christ identity in relationship with other people, primarily and specifically in a marriage relationship, because that's where he goes in in the section we're looking at today, uh, how how do you live that out? So... That's where we're, gonna, we're going today. If you want to take a Bible and turn to Ephesians 5, you can do that. I've got some help today. Panel, would you, would you come up and join me? Uh, these ladies are going to join me as we dive into uh, the past. Like, That's why all these chairs and the cushy chairs and the sofas. This is what we're going to... We're going to have a little conversation in our, in our text today from Ephesians 5. So, um, first of all, ladies, thank you for joining me. All morning you have... I keep waiting for them just to stay and say, no, Dave, you got this all on your own and leave me hanging. Um, but maybe before we do- read the passage together for everyone, could, you, could we start by just you sharing your name, where you live, maybe how long you've been married, um, and maybe your biggest sin? That'd be, no, <laughs> all except that last one. Can I name my husband's biggest no, sin? No, no. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself this morning. Oh, and I should tell you why her husband's not. No, actually, there's actually, uh, so while we're doing this here today, P- 
Pastor Rich in Battle Lake is doing this with some guys, with some husbands. And guess what's gonna happen next week? We're going to Battle Lake and him and the guys are coming here and they're gonna do a, we're gonna have a men's panel talking about the same passage next Sunday, okay? So, but we're first. Okay, so go ahead now, Joanne, sorry. I cut you off. Okay, I'm Joanne Austin, married to John. Uh, we live on the other side of Fergus, over by Hoot Lake. And um, we've been married 53 years. And I, we have two children and seven grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And my name is Sophia Pettigrew. I'm married to Joel. Um, we have been married for 12 years, and we live on the south side of Fergus on Highway 29 towards Swan Lake. We have four children. Uh, two, four, seven, and eight. And I'm Angela Paulson. I'm married to Mike for almost 33 years. We have three adult children also, and we live near Elba Lake, um, close to Tips and Amounts Golf Course. And I'm Nicole Pekarski. I'm married to Brian. We've been married almost 19 years. We live on Long Lake, right next to Jewett Lake, and we have three girls. Terrific. Okay. Well, we're going to read the text uh, for everybody today. If you have a Bible, you can kind of follow along in your, path, your scripture. But Ephesians 5, we're going to start at verse uh, 21. We read there, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Okay, awesome, thank you. So, boom, there it is. And now, I'm not, I'm not sure who's more nervous, you or me. Um, I feel like I've walked into the lion's den. You guys, as, we do, as we deal with this, there's some hot button issues. This is a hot topic. I feel like saying, hi, I'm, I'm Whoopi Goldberg, and this is The View, welcome. <laughs> to the view here this morning. Um, there's, some, there's some issues here. Uh, there's some, and I think this text can push people's buttons. And maybe it pushes yours. So can we start? Let's just, what, what in here is, are some of the, button, the buttons, the hot so topic can issues? can we just talk about the word submit? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I come from a long line of strong German and Swedish women, um, yeah. so submitting isn't necessarily a strength area for us. Okay. We, you know, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah, it's, but that's, that's definitely, any other, like, so then why is that a challenge for us? I think if we don't understand what the Bible means by submission, it can feel harsh or repressive. Um, more like a dictatorship than a partnership in marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically, Angela, you mentioned something earlier about just even history and, and how maybe that plays into how we process that. Well, in our culture, you know, yeah. just in 19, the 1920s, women earned the right to vote, and that, that um, cause of equality has been a part of our fabric for a long time. And so while there's, there's, has been ever, well, for longer than that, and right up to today, kind of a, 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 in culture, the pushing for what does equality in gender equality look like in culture, right? And what does that mean? And then the church, we're sitting here, we're dealing with this 2,000-year-old text 
that sounds like, hey, we're stuck back there 2,000 years ago, and we got to get with the times, and so, so there, are, there are issues. And, and yet this, this is a call to every generation. This is a call to Christian people wherever they live, whether that culture is repressive towards women or not. I mean, this just deals with, talks to all of us. So I, I shared with these ladies a, a quote from a book that was published in 2019 called Confronting Christianity. And, and in it, Rebecca McLaughlin, Rebecca McLaughlin uh, writes about her struggles with lots of things. But in particular, she talks about this concept of submitting to her husband, the passage here in Ephesians chapter five. And this is what she writes, and here's how she puts it. I think this captures what we're talking about. She says, I came from an academically driven, equality-oriented, all-female high school. I was now studying in a majority male college, and I was repulsed. I had three problems with this passage in Ephesians five. The first was that wives should submit. I knew women were just as competent as men. Two, my second problem was with the idea that wives should submit to their husbands as to the Lord. It is one thing to submit to Jesus Christ, the self-sacrificing king of the universe. It's quite another to offer that kind of submission to a fallible, sinful man. My third problem was the idea that the husband was the head of the wife. This seemed to imply a hierarchy at odds with men and women's equal status as image bearers of God. Okay, so we have to talk about that word because the word submit is really what jumps out. Now, in the passage, in the passage, Paul addresses everyone and he says actually submit one to another. So before he addresses women particularly, and he does, there's no skirting it, he addresses women specifically on this subject, he calls everybody to it. He says we're to submit one to another, which means wives to husbands, husbands to wives, children to parents, parents to children, employees to the boss and boss to the employees and everyone. We're all called to mutual submission. But then he does lay it out specifically to the wife as this is a particularly, this is like he calls you out specifically as wives. He calls the, the husbands out some, in a particular way too. What does that word mean? Because it's, this word sticks out of the ground like a tree root that's above ground that's easy to trip on. Here's the, w- the way this word plays out. The word submit in the Greek is the word hupotasso, and it's helpful to us in this regard. It gives you a picture of what submission looks like. Hupo tasso is it made up of two parts, hupo and tasso. Hupo meaning under, and tasso meaning to place. And it, so it literally means in this text to place oneself under someone else in order to lift them up. And the wife is called specifically to place herself under the husband to lift him up. And, it, and it's in the middle voice, grammatically, which simply means... This is not something done to you as the wife. It's not forced submission. That's not what this is. This is to do so voluntarily, where you yourself, as the wife, make a decision that the, that the MO for your marriage is going to be, I'm going to place myself under to lift him up. That's, that's my role. That's how I'm going to play that out. So talk to me now a little bit about well, what does is, what is submission look like in a marriage? How do you do that? We can talk about what it's not in a bit, but what, what does it look like? I think for, for John and me, <clears throat> it's a submission. Uh, it gets difficult when there's a decision to be made and we're on opposite sides of how that decision needs to be made. Right. <clears throat> so for us, um, it doesn't mean that I immediately defer to, I have to immediately defer to John's opinion on it or his um, thinking on it, but we have this full freedom in our relationship to discuss, uh, lay out the pros and cons, and some of my pros, pros might be his cons and vice versa, but we talk it through, and, and then if we can't, you know, if I can't see that, um, that if we're not in agreement yeah. by that point, then um, I get to seek the Lord for grace to say, 
okay, um, let's go with yours. Or he might say, okay, let's go with yours. It, it can work either way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe submission means deferring to the other in a decision making. That's one way that you, one example mm -hmm. of what that might look like. Yeah. Okay, how yeah. are the rest of you handle that? Yeah, so Joel and I, um, in some premarital counseling that we received, uh, the pastor said if there was a um, decision that needed to be made that we didn't come to the same conclusion, that we would just lay it out on the table. Um, and I guess, I didn't share this before, but it's like bigger ticket items. Um, mm -hmm. And we have had several big ticket items recently uh, with education, job change, um, moving, our home, and um, yeah, some other things. And I would have to say at each point in time, um, we, we were able to, when we weren't on the same page, we just put it on the table and discussed it later. Good. Um, one of the passages that, that uh, talks about how to live in relationship that's a powerful one is from Philippians 2. I want to read part of that. I mentioned that this is a hard one to live out. We, I, <laughs> I shared with the ladies, the, we, Michelle, we had this red at our wedding. You know, and you notice Michelle's not on the panel to say how Dave's doing it, living that one out. But she's right there, so you can ask her, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> Philippians 2, listen to this one. Do nothing, and this is to everybody, husbands, wives, teachers, students, bosses, employees, everybody. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather, in humility... Value others above yourselves. So this is placing yourself under so that person is higher. Value them above yourself, not looking out for your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Uh, Richard Foster um, says, submission leads to liberty. The liberty to be able to let go the terrible weight and burden of always needing to get my own way. I think that's a helpful way to think about it. So talk to me about this, this passage and then maybe that quote. Uh, what if you have a couple who's living out Philippians 2? Imperfectly, but they're directionally they're saying, that's, that's who we are going to be. We're going to be the couple where each is like lifting the other up. We're going to mutually submit and we're going to look, we're going to think about what is she, what's, what would be the biggest blessing to her as we decide this? Or what are her interests in this decision? And, he, and she's saying, what would he want? I want to do what he wants. I love that guy. He may or may not always be right, but I, I, I can go with this. I love him. I want to, I want, talk to me a little bit about how that plays out as you think about it, and again, your own relationship, or in, and, and what is that, how does that help when, if, if each is living out that lifting the other up and laying down their interests for the, for the sake of the other? That sounds like heaven. Yeah, it does, right? <laughs> <laughs> it will be perfect. Yes. Yes. You know, I'll just, I'll just chime in and share that um, one of the challenges that we've, we've dealt with in our marriage that we're getting better at, so it does relate to this, is that um, Mike is really a planner. I mean, he, he can be pretty type A. I'm not. I'm, I'm really pretty type B. And so, you know, one of the things that he does to love me well is, is be okay with some spontaneity. And that sounds really strange, but I kind of shrivel up without it. Mm. And Mike, on the other hand, needs um, a little bit of a heads up if there's something that I think would be enjoyable to do. So, you know, that trying to meld each other's personalities and temperaments a little bit um, is in, in some small ways for us a part of what this passage is getting at. Good. Yeah, so how does, how does Ephesians, uh, the Philippians 2 help us understand that Ephesians 5 passage a little bit? Striving for that kind of relationship. Any other thoughts on that? Well, I think um, in one way that it's played out in Joel's and my marriage, uh, there was a time several years ago that I actually called Dave and um, was struggling with um, honoring Joel and um, 
doing what I knew I was called to do. And he pointed me to this Philippians passage, and it really helped me um, focus on how I can treat Joel. Um, And then knowing that I'm doing it for the Lord as well and honoring and pleasing him um, in my actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is, thank you, that is part of what this says here is to do this out of, out of reverence for Christ, or as you do to the Lord, how does that make a difference maybe in the how or the why of, of submitting anything else on the, if it's directed toward him? But what, because what if, like, he just doesn't deserve it, your husband? Like, what if he just, he's just a creep today? He's acting like a total moron. Does that, this certainly doesn't make it easier. I think... For me, this passage um, really was God pointing out to me that it's not about me winning, and it's not even about me submitting to Brian. It's about me submitting to him, which means laying down my own pride, which means when I think I am right beyond a doubt, I still have to lay myself down and, and submit to to Christ mm. and say it's not my will that me, that's important here, but it's my obedience to him. Okay, so Nicole, what, I, what I'm hearing you say is that the essence of this for you, so then it, it, um, it takes Brian out of the picture in one sense, because now it's not about Brian and whether or not he's right or deserves for me to defer to him in some way, however that looks in that circumstance. But it's an, it's an, it, for you, you see it as this is my service rendered to Jesus. He's getting the benefit of it right here, but it's not about Brian. Yep. Close? Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think that it's a working out, like all of Jesus' teachings are, right? The first shall be last. Turn the other cheek. None of that stuff comes naturally mm. to us. But it's all, a, it's all a working out, and it's an obedience to what he's called us to do. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of the things, thank you, one of the things we get to do in this passage is we get to read each other's mail. And what, of course, it's a little bit dangerous to them. I mean, like, there, here's the reality. When you read this, you, you get a group of guys reading this text, and they're going to focus on, yeah, look what it says to her. <laughs> and you get a group of ladies, and they're like, look what it maybe what it, look what it says to us, but also look what it says to him. So how does reading the mail for the guys, how about reading what the text says to him, how does that help? Or what, what connection do you see between what it says for, for him to do in understanding what and making it easier or harder for you to do what you're called to do? I think when I read this text, um, that it's asking both of us to put the other person first in a different way. It's called calling wives to submit to our husbands, but it's calling husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church and he gave himself up. Mm. So in my mind, like, I think he's got the harder job. Like, if, if we are living How in do you a... mean? If we're living in a Christian relationship and his job is to die to himself every day and put my needs first, and then I'm just called to trust that. Mm. So when you look at it that way, I just think he has the harder job. <laughs> so, so, right. So for reading his mail, it's calling you to place yourself under him to lift him up. And if you were to think of that, if we were to think of that in categories, and I don't even like these words connected to this text, but if we were to think about this in terms of power or authority, okay, if you are, as the wife, granting him authority and granting him power in the relationship, his stewardship of that, the way he's supposed to use that, the way he's supposed to use his power or his authority is to, do, is to die, is literally to let, his, let every ounce of him die to himself and live for you and to you, right? I mean, that's really the call to the husband. It's not like, I've got the power or I've got the authority, and then to use it in a selfish way, in sort of a self-aggrandizing, building oneself up. If there's any authority or power granted to the husband here, 
His use of it is, use it like Jesus. What did he do? He, he died so that you could be saved. He died to say, this is how much you matter to me. And is, Nicole, is that kind of the, yeah. there's the harder job. There's the more difficult role. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about misuses or abuses or misunderstandings of this text uh, because I think that's, that's possible. I gave one example of that, maybe the husband who just, you know, he, he, he sees this as a chance to build himself up and not die to himself. Um, what about, what does, not, what does submitting to one's husband not mean? Talked about a little bit of what it does. What does it not mean? I think it doesn't mean it's demanding. Okay. Like, tell me more about that. Like, what does that mean? Uh, that the husband doesn't have the right to push the female into submission. And I think women can get really mixed up about this, too. Um, I know somebody who was very religious, um, and she believed that, that the interpretation of this passage meant that she needed to submit to her husband in all ways, um, to the point that when her kids were adult children, she ended up telling them, I've purchased my funeral dress. It's in the closet. I've written my funeral plans. They're in my Bible. If your dad does something to me, I just want you to know that I've already prepared for you. And her husband did. He, he took her life. And she believed, because she was a faith-filled woman, and that she needed to submit to her husband, that she needed to stay in this relationship that was unsafe. Mm. Um, and I think that's... Um, for some women, maybe they struggle with what does what does it mean to be a faith-filled woman um, if I'm with somebody who is not treating me well. Right. So I think it was Sophia that suggested the uh, just in the back of the Meaning of Marriage book by Tim and Kathy Keller. Uh, there's a there's a section on make decision making, and in that it ta- addressed the issue of. If you're in a situation where it's abusive, so to love your husband and to submit to him is the something you can do in your heart, but then you should call the police and get him locked up, right? It was like that. It was like, love your husband and forgive him in your heart and then call the police and have him locked up. I mean, it was, it was the, to, to, that, to that point where... Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, other examples. So uh, one of the things I'm... Sometimes people could uh, think that submission means that I'm less than. Talk about that. I think um, when we think about too, being, that being less than, I think, you know, if we go all the way back to Genesis, when God created Eve for Adam, um, he created a partner, mm. um, somebody who could be his friend, and that partnership is really important. So... I, I don't see it again as a power over. I, I like Nicole's illustration and Sophia talking about it being just this cycle of um, just really special support for one another in maybe different ways, but still a really beautiful way to support each other. You know, we didn't spend a lot of time with verse, I think it was the last verse in this passage today yeah. about love and respect, but if I respect my husband, he loves me more. And it's kind of, you know, if we can wrap it up that way, um, again, a little bit, just I think that is another way to explain that cycle in really simplistic terms. Um, so, yeah, I, I think submission, it doesn't need to be a bad thing as we puzzle this out a little bit more. Sure. Um, sometimes I think submission as serving as well. And when you are able to serve, somebody, you lift them up. Um, I've had several jobs throughout my um, 13, growing till now, um, but many of them have been serving, and um, I'm just thinking of one lady in particular at a nursing home that I cared for. Um, She couldn't take care of anything and had very poor control over her entire body, and, uh, but to be in the position of serving somebody so low, 
just brings like great joy to our lives. So I think mm-hmm. it can also be thought of in that way um, mm-hmm. as we submit mm-hmm. also can mean to serve. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it doesn't take away our value as women. You know how the Bible says there's another, neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, we're all in Christ Jesus. And that we have value and that God has called us and so you, in, in those situations, you need to pr- protect your value mm-hmm. of what God has given you. But at the same time, we can use our value to serve others. And I think that Beautiful. that's what that. this is calling us to. Yes, love that. Use that value to serve. Because you're made in the image of God. The imago Dei, the, the made in the image of God, doesn't apply just to the male. It's men and women. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's run to the cross, hmm. okay? Let, let's take this conversation as we wind down. To, to the cross. Um, in this context, this is, what, this is the picture I have in mind. If, if submission is placing oneself under so the other can be lifted up, is not the cross the ultimate hubotasso? Like the ultimate not just laying oneself down, not, not just placing under, but placing under, under, like in the ground, under. Did Jesus not show us that this is what it's about, that he went ultimately, like he who was high and mighty became low and, and weak, right? And so what he calls us to, he's done. Uh, uh, let me just use this quote from, uh, again from McLaughlin. She says, I have been married, this one who said, I had such a hard time with this passage. She says, I have been married for a decade and I am not naturally submissive. I, have nat- I, have, I am naturally leadership oriented. I hold a PhD and a seminary degree and I am a trained debater in the family. Thank God I married a man who celebrates this. Yet it is a daily challenge to remember my role in this drama and notice opportunities to submit to my husband as to the Lord, not because I am naturally more or less submissive or because he is more or less naturally loving, but because Jesus went to the cross for me. Could, could one or two of you just kind of comment on that? Like, how do you, how do you now take this idea of, of this discussion of Ephesians 5 and the cross and even forgiveness and we run to, to what Jesus did for us. As we wrap up, could you, could you kind of point there too and take up McLaughlin's quote or what you see? I love that we can in marriage celebrate each other's differences. But I also love that Jesus has called for us to live differently. Because we're supposed to look different than the world is, right? I mean, that's what, that's what we are called to. And when we live in a marriage and we're striving to do this for each other, where we're both putting the other person first, that looks different. Mm-hmm. And it's attractive. People see that and they're like, oh, he really loves her or she really loves him. And it's, it's attractive and what the ultimate goal is that it's attracting people to Christ, right? Through our marriage. That's what this passage says, that, you know, we are to reflect the relationship that Christ has with the church in our marriage. That's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think something too, that right before we came up here, we all kind of agreed that this is a working out, um, daily, monthly, um, that, that you don't get to like a point where you have it down and uh, um, you're free to coast, but uh, it can be a challenge, um, but to keep on striving toward that goal. Yeah, yeah, amen. Well, I want, and in that spirit, I wanted to say thank you, ladies, for being a part of this as you daily, monthly, yearly kind of figure out what does that look like to live in relationship, to be in Christ, in relationship, as wives with your husbands. Um, God's blessings on you. Thank you. Um, we, I prayed for this this morning. I think we all have been praying for this this morning. And I think God shines beautifully through you. And thank you for sharing a bit of your journey and your story with us. 
I'm thankful for you. Nicole, would you wrap us up in prayer? Yes. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have not called us to something that you haven't already done yourself. You submitted to the cross. You laid down your life for our sins. And so, Father, as we strive to follow your example, I just pray that it can be a continually working out in our hearts, in our minds, of what it means to be a Christ follower, to be obedient to you, Lord. And I just pray for every heart here, Lord, that they would just hear your word, that they would see your love shining through it. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 I'll ask everybody to stand if you would. And could you say thank you to this team that joined me today? Awesome. You guys can be seated. Hear God's word of blessing over you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.